Hello everyone. In the previous video, I showed you how to do a simple basket analysis with Power Query. In this video, I'm going to show you the same with formula approach. But you have to have Excel 365 or Excel 2021 20, because we are going to use dynamic arrays and a few of the new functions available in Excel 365. So the output will be something like this. Based on the transactional table, we want to select which brand in the transaction they stay together. For example, brand A and B. And then I will see all the transaction with only brand A and brand B. And also a simple summary presented here. Let's see, if I select A and C, I've got the transaction. I see there are only two transactions with both brand A and C together. Let's see how we can do it. First, I need to create a helper column. In this helper column, I want to understand all the brands involved in this transaction. For example, on this slide, this is about transaction A001. In this transaction, we have two brands involved. So I want A and B to be up here across all the transaction of transaction A001. For transaction two, which will be B and C, yeah, because we have two B here and one C here, and this is what we want. Of course, we are not going to do it manually. We are going to do it with formula. With Excel 365, there is one new function called filter that is perfect for this scenario. What I want to filter, I want to filter all the brands up here, here. Press F4 to lock the range. And then comma, I, what I want to include here, that will be a true or false condition. And the condition will be when the transaction number in this column, A2 to A201, let me lock the range by pressing F4 to make it absolute reference. When this range is equal to the transaction number of the current row, which is A2, no need to give any dollar sign to it because I want relative reference for A2. So as simple as that, I will get a dynamic array to return all the brands involved here. Cool. But I don't want repeat the items. A up here three times. I just want A and B. So I can wrap this with the unique function. Unique function, yes. As the function name said, it will return a unique list of items. Now I have A and B. Cool. The next thing I want to do is to sort it, okay? This is a very subtle thing. Why I need it, I will give you an example. When I sort it in this scenario, the result is the same. But let's take a look at one scenario for the transaction number line here. Okay, Let me copy this formula to the position of transaction A009. Without the sort, let me remove it. Without the sort, I will get the result B and A because B is the first item up here in this transaction followed by A. Then we will have this. But in our analysis, in this basket analysis, what we care is what brands are being put in the transaction. We don't care about the sequence or the order of input. So in essential, A, B should be equal to B, A. In order to solve that, that's why I wrap the formula with salt. Finally, I want both A and B to be appear in one single cell. I do not want to return an array as the result. I want to see for each line of the record what brands for this transaction are involved. So, the perfect function is array to test, 
I just have to wet the entire formula with a way to test. As simple as that, I've got this transaction, A001, I've got the brand AB. So what I'm going to do right now is copy down. Beautiful. So as simple as that, I've got the helper column ready for me. And this is the fundamental elements for me to do the basket analysis. Think about, I can apply the auto filter here, and then I can filter to just the brand that I need. Now I've got all the transaction with both brand A and B together. We can filter to another transaction. Okay, show me the transaction with A and C together. There we go. Easy, isn't it? Let's go one step further and take it to the next level with the new functions and the dynamic arrays. Let's see the power of it. Okay, with the helper column created here, I want to create a uniqueness of the brands for selection. I want to make it into a data validation that gives me a pull down menu. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I want a unique list of item coming from the helper columns. Okay, and then I want to make it better. I want to sort it in ascending order. Just wrap it with sort, as simple as that. Okay, so I have a unique list of the combination for all the brands under column E here. I want a data validation in the cell H2. So I select H2, go to data, data validation. I want a list of items and the source will be this range, G2 and the magic code pan side. The pan side here means that is a dynamic array originating from the cell G2. Let's see what we will have. We have the list here as a put down menu through cell uh, data validation. Okay, so the next one is now I can hide this. The next one is based on the input here in H2. I want to return all the related transactions into the area like this. So what I'm going to do is to apply the filter function again. This is a super cool function. What do I want to filter? I want to filter the entire range of my data here. Comma. What do I want to include? Include is a true or false conditions. So whenever this range E2 to E201 is equal to the content that I selected here in H2, close parenthesis, enter, boom, there we go. <coughs> now I've got all the data coming from the data set. If I change A, B to A only, I've got only the transaction with A. This basically is the same effect of applying the auto filter here. Now you can see that I have the transaction 4, 8, 38, 21, 22, 50, blah, 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 blah. When I filter to bring A only, I will see the same. Yeah, but instead of doing that in my original data set, I pull all the data set on a different range on my spreadsheet. And now I realize that, oh, I have input one more columns that I do not need. I do not need this column. So what I can do is I go back to my original dynamic array formula here. The range, the array here, I don't want to include column E. What I need to do is just change it to column D. That's it, as simple as that. Next, I want to do some basic summary. The basic summary is the number of transactions. So what I can do is doing the unique again. Okay, unique. I want to see the unique value from this area. 
and then I've got the unique list and then I wrap it with canA but you will see the problem very soon here right now this range j2 to j11 is hot cooked this is not dynamic okay when I change the list here from A to A and C it still works but you may wonder why the number is 3 because indeed this is a hot cooked range so it includes some empty cells here and the empty cells here will be counted as 1 that's why I've got 3 if I have a longer list for example A, B because the range is hot cooked here this is definitely wrong okay this is not what we want we want the dynamic array how can we get the dynamic array in this scenario mm. that is very tricky because actually for this dynamic array everything originates from the cell content j2 so if we want to apply a dynamic array formula we have to reference to j2 with the pan side that means what i have to do is something like this i want to reference to j2 sorry j2 pan side when i reference to j2 pan side then i've got a copy of exactly the same but i don't care about other columns i care about only column the first column okay now when i select a i've got exact copy of a but this is not what i want because i want only to get the first column to count the number of unique item in this area i want it to be dynamic so what i want is another function the tech function i want to take the dynamic array originating from j2 don't forget the pan side how many rows i want to get every rows so i leave it blank which column or columns i want the first column so i input one so what do we have right now oh i have the column of the first column from the dynamic array originating from j2 okay so now i can wrap this with unique okay then i've got a unique list of the transaction number finally i can wrap it with can a to count how many unique transaction i have that is number nine okay let's test it with a and b and e there is only one only one if I go to A and D, there is two. The answer is two. Beautiful. So with the same logic, we can calculate the total quantity by adding this. So let's do it step by step. First, I want to reference to J2 pan side. That return the entire dynamic arrays originating from J2 here. But I want to look at the last column only so what I want to do is again the tick function I want to take every row so I leave it blank for the final argument columns I want the final column so I input minus one minus one mean the final column beautiful I've got the list of the quantity here so you know what I just have to wrap it with some and then I have my job done yeah this is 32 and this is 32 when I change this to B I've got three four five one two three four five five transactions with a total quantity of 34 so with all the new functions available in Excel 365 and the dynamic arrays a basket analysis can be done in just a few minutes this is super awesome I hope you like this video